Hey everybody, again, this is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the time for Bible study. So if you will, virtually join us. I am Minister Ryan Rutley, one of the ministers here at the Great Christian Tabernacle Church where our fine pastor is Dr. James L. Mormon. Sister Loretta Mormon is his only woman and we thank God for them today, you guys. So we're here, we're virtual, we are excited because the Word of God is gonna jump off the pages again for Bible study. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to worship you through the word. I just want to thank you, Lord God, for life, health and strength, food, clothing, shelter. Thank you for being so kind to us, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for providing every need. I'm asking you to forgive us for all of our sins, iniquities, uh, anything we've mismanaged, anything we've procrastinated on, even any and all offenses that you, Lord, would forgive us, Lord. I'm asking today, Lord, that you will bless the word, that it will jump off the pages into our hearts and come alive today in the name of Jesus. Now we, we yield to your authority. We say yes to your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody type amen. All right. With that being said today, guys, we're going to jump into the word of God. We're so excited to be here. If you will, we're going to go to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter number eight, verse number six. And it should read as follow. Set me as a seal upon thine heart as a seal upon thine arm for love is strong as death semicolon jealousy is cruel as the grave i'll read that again jealousy is cruel as the grave the coals thereof are coals of fire which hath a most vehement flame for the word of the Lord is blessed. Today, we're going to talk about the measure of jealousy. Again, the measure of jealousy. Everybody type in the comments, invite a friend, invite a neighbor to Christian Tabernacles Church's Bible study and type in the comments, the measure of jealousy. As we look at this word jealousy, I'm reminded and I go to the dictionary to look up the word and I find that jealousy generally refers to the thoughts or feelings of insecurity, <laughs> fear, and concern over a relative lack. That's rich. A concern of relative lack. Possessions, safety. Jealousy can consist of one or more emotions such as anger, resentment, inadequacy, helplessness, and even disgust. We have to be careful when we look at the word jealousy because we have to understand that jealousy is as cruel as we just read as the grave. The Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is he. As I continue to look up this word jealousy, I'm realizing that envy is one of the seven deadly sins. This is serious. Let's think about this. Envy is one of the seven deadly sins. In the book of Genesis, envy, right, was the motivation behind Cain murdering his brother, Abel. As Cain envied Abel because God favored Abel's sacrifice. So envy is among the things that comes from the heart which defiles a person. There is a such thing as godly jealousy, right? But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Well, I can hear some of you thinking right now, Ryan, what's the difference between godly jealousy and jealousy from a man? I'll tell you. Jealousy from God has a protection plan. Somebody type that in the comments. Think about that. Write that down at the dinner table with your children, with your wife, with your significant, with your friends, your brothers, your homies. Right. Jealousy from God has a protection plan. But jealousy from a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, from any human being that's not God, it does not have a protection plan. What does that mean? That is very significant and it brings leverage to the scripture we just read that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. So what I want to do is I want to break down our Bible study today to bring you all three different principles. 
Okay? I'm going to give you biblical principles, give you some scripture that supports these principles. We're going to talk about some people in the Bible who dealt with jealousy. And then I'm going to give you, there are nine ways to get rid of jealousy that you can write down and study in your own time that we'll cover at the end. Principle number one, jealousy is equal to murder. Let's study that today. Jealousy is equal to murder. Have somebody type that down. Have somebody comment that in the section of our social media outlets. That jealousy is equal to murder. We know what murder is, right? <laughs> we know where murder stems from. Let's go to Genesis chapter number four, verse number eight. If you got it, you can just say, I got it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel, and he didn't shake his hand. He didn't give him a high five. He didn't give him knuckles. Cain killed Abel. Now, we just read for ourselves in Song of Solomon, that murder, excuse me, that jealousy is as cruel as the grave, right? We see already in the first book of the entire Bible that jealousy happens in the family. Can I pause for just a moment and talk about something? Isn't it amazing with jealousy? It's not the fact that jealousy happened. Sometimes what's so interesting is who is jealous? Do you have a family member that's jealous of you? <laughs> Do you have somebody close to you? Do you have somebody that's near you? And haven't you noticed that most people that give you the most measure of jealousy are those closest to you? Because a stranger doesn't know who you are. They're going to meet you. They're going to leave. They don't care anything about you and they're going to go on about their business. But isn't it amazing that those who are the closest to you are the most jealous. Those who know what you got, those who know where you're going are the most jealous. With that being said, friend, I am discovering that as we're studying this scripture, what is the extreme for jealousy? Is the grave. So I've noticed something. What is the measure of jealousy? The measure of jealousy is that it is an extreme. It's not just an emotion. It's not just limited to an emotion. Because those emotions are carrying consequences now. It's okay if you was mad. That's why the word says, hey, be angry and sin not. Because the measure is be angry. But as soon as you sin, something has taken place. Watch this to another level, causing now a new extreme. Don't, my friend, be jealous of someone and allow your selfish, inadequate, selfish way to get in the way of what it is you could be instead celebrating. Don't just tolerate, celebrate. So the first Principle is that jealousy is equal to murder. Somebody say murder. <laughs> That's extreme. That's extreme. And that's why we can say things more in five minutes than we can live out in a lifetime. Principle number two, jealousy has a cause and an effect. Again, principle two, jealousy has a cause and effect. Let's go to Genesis. You can skip over to chapter number 37. It's so good. This word is to sharpen us, is to help us, not to condemn, but to discern, to evaluate, to make better choices and decisions in our life so that jealousy won't be found in our heart. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to verse number four, Genesis chapter number 
37. And I'll actually encourage you to read the entire book of Genesis chapter 37, but we're just going to focus in on verse number four. It reads like this. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, comma, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. That's rich. We're talking about Joseph. And just to paraphrase, we understand that Joseph was favored. That's the cause. The cause is that Joseph was favored. What was the effect? His brothers hated him. Again, the cause is favor. <laughs> How many of you since have seen through a pandemic God's favor on your life? How many of you during a pandemic have made more money than you ever seen probably before the pandemic? How many of you have seen raises and you've seen favor on your life in so much that it causes your neighbor or your friend? And in this case, Joseph's brothers to hate him. So principle number two, jealousy has a cause and an effect. What is your cause? Well, because they hate him, he had favor. He had favor and they hated him. We have to realize that jealousy has an, a cause and effect. And what's amazing about jealousy is we have to realize most times the jealousy has no, if that's a word, the jealousy has no idea that the jealousor is jealous. And sometimes you are just moving and you're grooving and you're obeying God and you're fellowshipping with God. You're praying, you're fasting, you're saying, I want to get better. I want to go to the gym. I want to lose weight. Right. I want to work on my credit score. I want to do things in my life that's going to what? Grant me favor with God. And in your obedience to God, people will come in your path to distract you or to attract to become a magnet to, to try to throw off the favor of God. And in this case, Joseph, who has dreams, who has visions, who is summoned by the government to interpret these dreams. And on top of that, his father loved him. The Bible says more. Is there such thing as a favorite child? Is there such thing as a favored child? Yes. And so because his father loved him and his father gave him the coat of many colors, his brothers saw that there was, watch this, there was a lack of their possession. Remember we read earlier in our opening statement that whenever someone is jealous, realize, realize people of God, it's because of a relative lack. And the root word for relationship is to relate. Joseph has relatives. But Joseph has experienced increase. And the brothers feel that there's a sense of lack of that increase. We got the same father. We sit at the same table. We're from the same family and father loves you more. Somebody said favor. <laughs> is not always fair. And that's OK. When you are positioned for the blessings of God and favor of God, can I please help you with that? I want to encourage somebody who who's feeling the hate. Who's feeling the disgust from their environment. Can I tell you something? You didn't ask for the favor. <laughs> favor is not earned. Right. The grace of God, the peace of God, the, the joy of God, sometimes it's simply because you have positioned yourself for what God has in store for you. And positioning is not always about what you see with your naked eye. Please don't be fooled. Most people are jealous of things that they really don't know. They don't know that you were homeless. They don't know that you was on your last dollar. They didn't know 
that you was given your last smile and all you could do was frown that entire season. They didn't have a clue. But you pressed through and you pressed forward. And you pressed toward the mark. It has a cause. And it has an effect. So please understand if someone is jealous of you, realize that you are a target. <laughs> you are a target. You are marked for the purpose of God, for him to get glory. That same Joseph was thrown in a pit. Same Joseph was bound. But guess what? He came out victorious. L principle number three, jealousy is bondage that you can be free from. Again, jealousy is bondage. It is one form. There are many forms of bondage. But jealousy is a bondage that you can be free from. Let's go real quick to the book of Proverbs 27. Verse number four. It says wrath is cruel. Anger is overwhelming. But who can stand before jealousy? Oh, God, that's powerful. Wrath is cruel. Anger is overwhelming. But who can stand? Who can find justice? Who can be sentenced? <laughs> Who's to blame? Who can overcome? Who can stand before jealousy? Let's go to Galatians chapter number five. Again, the third principle is that jealousy is bondage. Galatians chapter number five. I hope you're getting something out of the lesson today. I hope it's blessing you and encouraging you. It's showing you what jealousy really looks like. And that jealousy is not just an emotion. It is an extreme. The measure of jealousy is that it is an extreme. Watch this. Galatians chapter five, verse 19 says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath. Strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before. In other words, he said, I told you all this already. As I have also told you in the time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is very important. Jealousy can get you to forfeit your inheritance in the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is, watch these nine things, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is what? No law. Have you noticed that jealousy has law associated to it? But when you can have one of the fruits of the spirit, there is no law against love. There is no law against joy. There is no law against peace. There is no law against long suffering. There is no law against gentleness. No law against goodness, faith. There is no law against meekness. You can't put temperance in jail. There is no law against any of the fruits of the spirit. So in other words, we have to realize in order for us to overcome jealousy, because that's the real question. If you are experiencing jealousy and let's be honest with ourselves, people of God, let's be real with ourselves. Let's look in the mirror. If you look in the mirror and there is maybe an ounce of jealousy, even in your heart, how minister Rutley do I get rid of it? You simply Confess it out. Jealousy is a sin. John 1, 9. You can put that on your tablet. If you confess your faults one to another, 
God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Did you know that jealousy is unrighteous? Did you know that jealousy looks like dirt on a white jacket? Jealousy looks like dirt on white shoes. It's a stain. And in order to get rid of it, you must confess it. Praise God for the word of the Lord is blessed. So since we looked at these three principles, number one, again, jealousy is equal to murder. Number two, jealousy has a cause and an effect. And number three, jealousy is a bondage that you can be free from. Oh, yes. And in order to be free from jealousy, you have to confess it and say, Lord, I have experienced jealousy in my life. Or, Lord, I have experienced jealousy in this area. Would you please take it away? It's just that simple. I want to give you nine ways that you can get rid of jealousy. Number one, accept jealousy for what it is and get inspired. Number two, find out if that thing can actually work with you or on you. Number three, it takes time to learn how to not be jealous. Number four, understand who you are and accept your uniqueness. Number five, meditate on your problem. In other words, study your problem. Number six, use visualization. Most people are jealous of things that they don't see, not the things they do see. Number seven, understand more about the cause of your envy. Number eight, work on your insecurities. If there's something that's not securing your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions, Start to work on them. Find a better outlet. And number nine, learn to be honest and to congratulate others. One of the ways you can get rid of jealousy real fast is to not show that you're jealous. But give someone a compliment. And when you see their reaction, that's going to bless you. Have you ever seen someone who thought they were the best thing since sliced bread? And you didn't know that that very person who looks like they were very arrogant really dealt with an insecurity. Peer pressures. They didn't feel like they were adequate enough. And just the moment, instead of being jealous, what you did is you said, hey, great job today on the court. Great job on singing your song. Great job on your promotion. Even though I'm working the same job as you, getting paid the same amount as you, congratulations for you taking a leap of faith, a better move for your family. And that one comment, that one compliment, that one small to you gesture of love and of gratitude encouraged the next person. So I love number nine, to learn to honestly congratulate others. All right, real quick, and then we're going to get out of here for today. I hope you all are being blessed, you guys. Here's what's amazing. After studying the word of God, and of course, we can't read the whole word of God in just a small amount of time. But I found something interesting. Abel was jealous from his brother Cain right away in Genesis. Joseph was jealous. He had jealousy. Excuse me. He dealt with jealousy from his brothers. David had to deal with jealousy from Saul, his father, his leader. Jesus dealt with jealousy from Judas. And many times we forget God himself dealt with jealousy from Lucifer. On every level in life. Can I tell you something? Jealousy is making you stronger. Can you deal with somebody when they want you dead? Can you look someone in the eye and genuinely love them? And their hatred towards you is just as cruel as the grave. 
Can you know you can stand in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people who are saying one day, <laughs> hail, hail, king of the Jews, in less than a week say crucify him? Understand that jealousy is not just an emotion. It's a sin. Again, it's like dirt on a white shirt. It's a stain that sticks out. You can feel when someone's jealous of you. You know it. You can sense it. That's called discernment. But what you do is you turn it around and you show love. And that becomes your deliverance. I pray that the word of God has pierced your heart today. And I will hope that you have taken these principles, these attributes, the scriptures themselves. And even if you're dealing with jealousy, even if you're faced with it, and even if you have it in your heart, God can remove it today. He is the doctors of all doctors. He is the lawyer that's never lost a case. Like the old saints would say, he is a doctor in the sick room. He's a healer, a provider. He loves you. Again, God's jealousy has a protection plan. Man has no protection plan when it comes to jealousy. With that being said, remember, we've discovered today that the measure of jealousy is that it is an extreme and it can be dealt with. God bless you. And until next time, always remember, God loves you and we do too. Enjoy your day and enjoy the word. At this time, what we're going to do is we're going to pray our way out. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those who have heard the word. And I pray that it has encouraged your people, that has jumped off the pages into our hearts. Father, forgive us for jealousy, even little jealous moments, little moments of covetousness for saying, I want that. I wish that was me. Forgive us for those moments, Lord. That was us in our immature phase of our faith. Father, perfect us. Help us to now give people compliments more than showing jealous tendencies. Help us to have the fruits of the Spirit. We thank you right now for the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Give us goodness. Help us to be good. Help us to have faith. Help us to show meekness. And help us to keep our temper when we want to go off. <laughs> Even during this pandemic, continue to favor us. Against favor, help us to show love. And against jealousy, help us to have peace. And we'll be careful to praise you and to glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and thank God. Have a wonderful day, everybody. God bless you.